everyone. So drive into a parking spot and talk with Pastor and our staff. We are looking so forward to worshiping with every last one of you guys. Good morning, Harvest Time. Would you stand with us? Come on, are you thankful to be inside this morning? Oh, I can't hear it. Are you thankful to be inside this morning? God is good. Amen. Let's worship. God is fighting for us, God is on our side, He is overcome, yes, He is overcome, we will not be shaken, we will not be moved, Jesus, you are here, carrying our burdens, covering our shame, He is overcome, yes, He is overcome, we will not be shaken, we will not be moved, Jesus, you are here, I will I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me, and I am free in Jesus' name. Carrying our burdens, covering our shame, He is overcome. Yes, He is overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, You are here. I'll sing it out. I will live, I will not die. I will resurrection power of Christ alive in me, and I am free in Jesus' name. I will live, I will not die. I will declare and lift you high. Christ revealed, and I am healed in Jesus' name.
as you stood there, Lord, even today in this moment, that was on your mind. We were on your mind. God, we thank you. And right now, we declare that your name is higher than any other name. Come on, church, would you say his name, Jesus? Come on, would you say it like you have some authority and say, Jesus? Jesus, there is no higher name, no greater name. We glorify you, we exalt you, we lift your name up. We thank you, God, for who you are. God, be glorified and lifted up and exalted in this house. We worship you, God. Come on, together, can we just say amen? Come on, God is good, amen? Amen. All right, church family, give God a praise. Isn't he good? He is, and all the time. Well, my name is Pastor David. I'm the kids pastor here. This is my daughter. Do you want to say your name? She doesn't, but she is excited to be here, I promise. But this is my daughter, Bethany. She's my second child. She doesn't know it, but she's the middle one. But she's going to help me illustrate a point because it is Father's Day. Today is Father's Day. So we're going to help teach a lesson. Do you want to help me? Great. Now, Bethany, do you like cookies? You do? Do you want a cookie? Well, hold on. Here, hold this bag for me. Stand right here in the middle where everyone can see you. Now, listen, all you have to do, don't eat the cookies, okay? Are you going to eat the cookie? Okay, don't eat the cookie. Be patient. Are you a patient person? I don't know about that. So I brought Bethany here because my oldest son, Peter, is actually pretty patient, and my youngest is a newborn, so he's not. But Bethany, we're working on patience. And I have been blessed recently in the past few months to have been home with my children more. Now, for the fathers out there like me, who maybe you've been working a lot and you're not normally home as much, you've been blessed as well to be spending more time with your kids. And we need patience, don't we? And then you know what? That's okay. Because what we need to remember, did you eat a cookie yet? Good job. Keep it up. What we need to remember is that God is patient with us. Our Heavenly Father is the example for what we should strive to be, patient. Because I will tell you, I'm not a patient person always. I'm not very good at it. If I have to wait for more than five minutes at McDonald's, I'd rather leave, even if I paid. I'm like, forget it, it's not worth it. But I have to learn with my kids to be patient, to show that kind of love to them. Because my son's learning how to tie his shoes. We need to go, maybe hold on, instead of doing it for him, give him a minute. If Bethany wants a cookie, she's having to learn I can't just eat all of them as much as I want to. I need to be patient. When we are struggling and we need to find ways to, to, to learn to be better, for God to help us, God is patient with us. And I'm so thankful because I, deserve, I don't deserve the patience God gives, the grace God has given me. I don't deserve. And so I want to show my kids, hey, I don't deserve it, but I'm going to show you the kind of love God gives to me because that's a good father. He is the good father, and I want to be that. So today, would you like to eat a cookie now? You can have one. Can I have one too? I can? <gasps> You're so special. Thank you. You want this one? Okay. Go ahead and eat it. Not yet? Okay. I'll eat them. I'll, I don't care. I'll eat on stage. But we need to have patience with our family, with our friends, because God has shown us increasingly amounts of patience that I don't think is human, humanly possible. But we need to show that to our family. When you're home with them during all this time, don't look at it as a burden. Man, I just got to get stuff done and these kids are all over me. Look at it as an opportunity to show them the love of God, the patience that he shows us. All right? All right, well, we love you guys, fathers. Happy Father's Day. We have a video for you guys. I hope you enjoy. Hey, guys. Me and Pastor Cameron have a dad joke challenge for you. We're yes, gonna sir. We're going to have to take turns telling jokes to each other, trying to get the other one to laugh. If we get them to laugh, we get a point. Yes, sir. Let's start this all with rock, paper, scissors. You ready? Sounds good. Ready? One, two, three, shoot. All right. I go first. I always go last. Two guys walked into a bar. The third one ducked. <laughs> what kind of person was Boaz before he got married? Ruthless. <laughs> <laughs> one on one, baby. My wife asked me the other day, how do I look? And I told her with her eyes. Yeah, 
first line. How does Moses start his morning? He brews a pot of coffee. <laughs> My wife tried to unlatch our daughter's car seat but using only one hand. She said, how do people with one arm do this? I said, <laughs> said single-handedly. <laughs> Did Eve ever have a date with Adam? No. Just an apple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what the least spoken language is in the world? Sign language. You're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the smallest person in the Bible? Nehemiah. Get it? Nehemiah for. But it's funny. That's all right. Wow. Somebody's stubborn. Tiebreaker round. Here we go. Did you know the Secret Service isn't allowed to yell get down anymore to the president? I have to tell him Donald Duck. Hmm. You're smiling. <laughs> what do you call a diamond and a dog? What? A diamond and a roof. <laughs> Why do you have to be quiet in the church? Because it's offensive. Some people might be sleeping. Mm. <laughs> Why did God make men before women? Why? Because he needed a rug trap before his final draft. Yes, sir. So there you guys have it. We tied it up because obviously we're both too funny and charming. So clearly. Hey, buddy. Hey, you too. Thanks, man. To all the dads out there, happy Father's Day. We love you guys. And I hope that you guys get a good laugh out of this. I mean, let's be honest. I'm by far the funniest one. So enjoy your Sunday dads. Love you guys. Later. I love you more. Bye. to say how much we appreciate all you dads. <laughs> Amen. Well, I tell you, aren't you thankful for not only dads, but men of God who love the Lord and who represent uh, a leadership and authority, but also the heart of the Father of God uh, towards our kids and live it out daily. And so dads, I'm proud of you. And uh, today, uh, well, Good thing is the weather came in, so I didn't have to worry about any of y'all being out at the lake. Instead, you could be here with us this morning, right? And so, listen, it's so good to be together. And uh, dads, happy Father's Day to you. This morning, I, whenever, actually yesterday, I was kind of thinking, and uh, as many of you know, my dad passed away about two years ago. Uh, this is this year as we honor uh, fathers and celebrate Father's Day. I tell you, I, I've been kind of in two different ways of thinking, should I post something or should I not? But I tell you, you know, thinking about the impact that my dad has made in my life, uh, even more so, uh, makes me want to be that dad for my kids and to live a life before them that, that they would have something to reach up to. And you know what? Listen, I know dads, we're not perfect. Man, yesterday I messed up as a dad. I, I have my moments just like everybody. Uh, I have my moments when my voice get, probably gets a little too loud, when I do stupid things. But you know what? Uh, in the midst of that, those are the things whenever they see the constant in your life before them and the place where you lead and the place of not only a place of, uh, of strength and assurance in front of your kids and as a provider, but also those moments whenever you can come back to them and say, you know what, hey, I apologize for my action or I apologize when they see the tenderness of your heart. I tell you something, the long-standing outcome is this, is that they'll see somebody that they can always look to for advice, somebody that they can look to to be strong in their life, and someone who would love them even when they mess up too. And so I just want to encourage you, dads, keep on living for Jesus, and man, model uh, who God is before in a physical form before your kids, and how you love them, how you serve, how you provide for them, how you correct them, and in every way. And dads, I just want to say happy Father's Day to you. And uh, we're excited that today we get to celebrate this together. Amen? Well, listen, today, uh, if you got your Bible, you can go ahead and open up to Matthew. And uh, just a moment, we're going to be there. But uh, I can't show that he has a, a 
uh, testimony this morning. Kid, I'm going to ask you, gonna, I want you to share that here in, in my sermon. Here in just a little bit, I'll, I'll call you up for that part. And there's a part of my sermon where I think it'll fit in good there. Uh, but I'm going to have him come and share a testimony here in just a little bit. But if you got your Bible today, I want to speak to you in what I've entitled The Good Father. Everybody say The Good Father. And out of this, how you mean you know that we, not, we have a lot of good dads in this room today, a lot of great dads in this room, and men who, uh, who, like I said, who provide for their family, men who are there who play ball with their kids, who go to the games, who take them fishing. My dad would take me hunting, and I want to tell you something. I had a good father. I had a great dad, and, uh, and I want to tell you, man, every day I miss my dad. Now that my dad's going to be in heaven, Man, every day of my life, there's something to where I wish I could pick up the phone and call my dad. There's, th there's things that I wish that I would have got to tell my dad before he went on to be with the Lord. But still in the midst of it, more than anything, I'm thankful for the heritage that I have. And that even in times whenever uh, my dad uh, my messed up or whenever he might have been, I'm, in my opinion, maybe a little too hard. You know, I'm thankful for the life that he modeled before me. And let me tell you what it was. It wasn't just being a man, but being a man of God. Because I know this, my dad, uh, he didn't have a, he had, he had a dad, but his dad wasn't always in, involved in his life. In fact, if it wasn't for his mom, my grandpa wouldn't have been as involved in my dad and his sister's life uh, if it wasn't for their mom and making sure that happened uh, because he came from a split home and, and there's a lot of back history there. But this is something that I learned growing up watching my dad was this, is that seeing the model of what he modeled before me was not because necessarily all because of his earthly father in which all of his dads in this room, if we were to be honest, especially as men of God, I'll be honest with you, I don't have it figured out. In fact, there's many times when I know I fall short as a dad, but that which I desire and that which I try to model is after more than even my earthly father, my heavenly father. Because see, here's the reality. Everyone in this room, whether if you came from a broken home or if on earth, if you've been fatherless, if, if you don't even know your dad, or maybe there's a reason why, for some reason, whatever uh, life has dealt you, there's a disconnect, or maybe even there's a, 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 a disconnect between you as a dad and your, your children. I want to tell you something. We all have a father. We all have a heavenly father. And when we look at who he is, his nature, we look at his character, we look at who God is in our life, we find out that there's no man on this earth that will ever come in comparison to him. But you know what, men? He gives us a model to strive to be like. He gives us a model for us to form and fashion our actions, our life, our responses in life. And reality is this, whether we're a dad or we're not, if we're just men, it's the same thing with you women. As women, he gives us a pattern for us to model a likeness towards us, to live our life out towards. And that in our lives, we strive to be like him. And out of that place... Because of what he did on the cross, because of the finished work of the cross, and because of his goodness, and even the reason why there was the cross, we see the fullness of the goodness of God manifested and really see not just how good God is, but truly how good of a father he is. I want you to look at this today because I want to go through and I want to kind of, kind of walk through some scriptures today. In fact, it's going to be pretty quick. Uh, I'm going to give you a lot of context. I'm going to give you a, a lot of passages that maybe later on, so just write down. You can go back and study them out more in depth because today I want us to look at the names of God because each of these names were given or shown throughout scriptures because of encounters whenever our Heavenly Father, Father had an encounter with earth or an encounter with mankind. Out of each of these encounters, uh, there were places to where either there was an altar built and there was a response speaking about the nature of God or the character of God, or it was a place, a time whenever man realized, man, this is who God is because God revealed himself to man in that moment and that, that, that of who he was in that moment to them. <laughs> if you've got your Bible, I want you to turn to Matthew. And in Matthew, we see here of a prayer that Jesus gives in Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 6, verse 9 through 13. In fact, for many of us, I don't know about you dads, but I pray a lot simply because I have kids. Not only that, because I'm married. I pray a lot. And in fact, I repent a lot because I'm married. But I pray a lot and ask for wisdom because I, I have kids. And so out of that position, 
When I look at scripture, Jesus is responding to the disciples here, and he's telling them, hey, when you pray, this is a way to pray. In fact, let's look at that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. It says, in this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. How, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In this simple prayer, Jesus in teaching the disciples hit on who God is through all this. We see him as a provider. We see him as, as one who, who helps to protect and a protector. We see him as one who keeps us, one who forgives and even takes care of debts. In this room, if I ask how many of you dads out there have had to take care of a debt for a kid, probably a lot of hands across this room would have to go up. If we look at how many times that we stepped in on behalf to take care of our kids, not just to provide, but maybe have to step in on a debt, whether if it was a financial debt, maybe it's an emotional debt, maybe it was some kind of physical indebtedness. Out of that, there's a place where as dads, we step into that, and we're the fixers in the house. We're the ones who help come to mend and to fix the broken things. But also, we're the corrector. We're the arm, the outstretched arm that we provide. And in this, we're seeing all these things of who God is, and ultimately, Jesus comes back in this prayer, and he starts it off really with pinpointing where the solution to all things in our life resolves, and that's in God. Yes. <laughs> so he says this. I want you to look. That was good timing, wasn't it? I want you to look at this in verse 9. He says, our Father in heaven, he says, listen, when you're praying, when you're calling out, don't call out to a dead God. Don't call out to something that has passed away. Don't call out to Muhammad. Don't call out to, to Baal. Don't call out to, listen, he says, pinpoint, our Father who art in heaven, and listen what he says, hallowed be thy name. One time there was a question of what's in a name. When we look at the names of God throughout scripture, we truly see an impact all of who he is. I want you to look at this with me. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 14, we see that, Jesus, uh, that God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. We see this whenever the Lord provided the ram and the bush for Abraham, whenever he went to take up Isaac to sacrifice him as God called of, I, uh, of Abraham to do. But yet out of his obedience, whenever God told him, said, stop, right at the moment he's going to take Isaac's life, and we see where God provided a ram instead to be the altar in the bush. God, our provider. I want to tell you something today. I want to encourage you. We have a good God. We have a good Father who provides always for all that we need. Not only is he God provider, but he's also Jehovah Raha, Ra Ra the Lord our shepherd. We read this in Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is, the psalmist David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Man, what a promise, what a testimony that in the highs and the lows of David's life, he constantly reflected upon his good father, the good shepherd, the one not only who provided, but was the shepherd in his life that would lead him by still waters, that would guide him, guide him through life circumstances, whether if it's through the valleys, through it's through the cliffs and the mountainsides, or if it's at the summit of the rock. Listen, God is faithful to be there with us, and he doesn't leave from behind. Listen, he's right there all alongside with you, leading you wherever you go. Our key is to trust him. Amen? So not only is he Jehovah Jireh, but he's Jehovah Raha, the Lord our provider. In, J in Judges chapter 6, verse 24, when the Lord met with Gideon, the, uh, the angel of the Lord came to Gideon and began to call him out to be a mighty man and to rise up to set the children of Israel free and break them out of the bondage of the Midianites and the Amalekites. Scripture tells us this, that he looked to the Lord and in his prayer, he called him. He said, you are the Lord our peace. You are Jehovah Shalom. And we know the story that God challenges him. Not only does he go down and tear down the altars of Baal, but ultimately he helped the Lord, enables him, and gives them the ability to overcome the Malachites and then also the Malachites. Man, the Lord is faithful. He's your peace in the midst of storms, in the midst of battles, in the midst of circles, of trials, and situations in life. I want to tell you something. Only true peace can come from him who is creator of all things and who's in full control. Jehovah, shalom. 
the Lord our peace. And this leads us next one. Now, Ken, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and begin to make your way up here. And this is what we find is that not only is God one who is our provider and our, our shepherd who leads us and our peace, but he's also our healer. And if you're looking for that, Jehovah Rapha. We find this in Exodus. In Exodus chapter 15, we read about the encounter with the children of Israel when they're coming down. And as they come to this water, and the water was bitter, and they couldn't drink of it. And so Moses takes and puts this branch. And, hey, I'll bring a, I'll, if, unless he wants to come up, you can do it from right there, Ken, unless you walk up the steps. So you. you can do it right there in just a second. Out of that, he comes to water banks, and they would have to put these limbs in the water to cause the water to where it could be sweet, where they can drink it. And out of this, they begin to complain, and God responds to them. And listen to what he says to them. He says, listen, if they'll be diligent, in fact, listen to this prayer because, or this response, because this is very similar to whenever Solomon dedicated the temple, it was the same response that God would give at this time to the children of Israel. It's one that he reflected upon. God gave this promise. He says, listen, he made an ordinance with them. He said, if they're diligent to heed his voice, this is Exodus 15, 26, and did what was right in the sight of God, and give ear to his commandments and kept all his statutes, he would put a none of the diseases on them that he brought onto the Egyptians. What a promise. He says, listen, I'll be your healer. In your life, with whatever goes on, if you'll be my people, if you'll heed the words that I give you, if you'll listen to my statutes and you obey my statutes, if you listen to my word, listen, I'll give you life. I'll be your healer. This morning, Kid came to me and showed me that just a testimony of what God's been doing in his life and even battling after he's fought off COVID-19 and in that hospital. But this morning, he just wanted to personally share his testimony and what God's doing, praying that it would be a, a blessing to you this morning. Kim? You know, I have been proven to me over and over that God loves us dearly, that God answers prayers. I've had so many occasions in my life that I knew beyond a doubt God had his hand on me, pulled me through dark and bad times, or members of my family over and over. And this last time, there was actually a day or two there I wondered if my days on earth were about done. And after recovering, and it is a slow process, it came upon my heart that God is telling me to share my testimony about his gracious, his grace, his love, his mercy, and that he will, in fact, answer prayers for any and all of us. We're all God's children. I have become so aware that he's not done with me on earth yet. Amen. And through his touch, I'm able to be here this morning and share God's word and tell every person here, prayer works. God will touch you. God will heal you. Amen. God will give you whatever you need. I thank God that I've been through this, that he gave me a wonderful wife that was there for my every need to help me through this that prayed for me day and night, and along with, I know, my church family, my children, God answers prayer. Amen. I am so blessed and so graceful to know he's not done with me yet, and I thank him for the opportunity to share the power of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> Listen, so we see that God's our healer, and in fact, as Ken's a living testimony, uh, for those of you who don't know, Ken uh, had battled with COVID-19, was in the hospital. Man, the Lord just touched his body, and he was just sharing with me. He said, Pastor, man, even the recovery, as we're getting over all this, and he's been uh, weeks through that, and thank God for healing him. But even how that, the, the, the outcome of just the weakness in his body and overcoming, but daily, still God giving strength and being able to overcome and recover from that. What a living testimony, and he didn't share this, but God even healed him of cancer years ago and continued to give good reports on that. Amen? And so God's faithfulness that he's our healer. Then listen, now I want you to catch this today, because he's not just our healer physically, but he's our healer spiritually, physically, and emotionally. 
But it's when we trust him and we look to him, the author, finish of our faith, and we put it completely trusting in him in the midst of that. I want to tell you something. That's when he, we see the power of his hand move in our life. That place of surrender saying, God, it's not in my ability, but it's in you. All of what you've done, he's faithful to be a healer. Not only that do we see him in Jehovah Rapha, but we also see him in Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our victory. We see this in Exodus 17, verse 15. Whenever the Lord gave the victory over Israel, to Israel over the Amalekites, <laughs> this place where God blessed them and strengthened them and kept them. And out of this, the response was this, God truly is our victory. You remember the story as, as they would have to hold up Moses' hands, and every time Moses' hands were up, the, the Israelites would win. Every time they dropped, the Amalekites would take over. And they took stones and put under that he could rest his arms, that he would sit down to keep his hands up, that the children of Israel would win in the victory. But we know this, that the victory is not ours, but it only comes to us because of God himself. Amen? That God is our victor. He's our victory. And so listen, I want to encourage you. Man, if you're going through battles right now, look to your good father. Look to the one who will rescue you, not only to be your shepherd, your provider, not only to be your peace, not only to be your healer, but he'll also be your victory. We see in Psalms 23, as the psalmist continues to write in verse 3, he says, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. We see this Jehovah Sikhanu, that he's the Lord, our righteousness. That this, scripture tells us that there's no righteousness or that there's no good in us. That we're only made righteous because of Jesus, the cross of Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross. Scripture tells us that we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. And we find out that really to be made right, we're being made right with God. Therefore, if we're right with God, then and only then can we stay in position to be at peace and at right with mankind. Because, friend, otherwise we will always be in battle. There's been an issue, and I'll make this statement in, in regards to current circumstances uh, myself and a couple other pastors, and we're, we're starting to create a team to begin to meet and pray for our nation, pray for our city, and uh, we're meeting here in a few weeks, and uh, out of this, we've been talking, and, and what's been interesting is the heart of pastors in our community is this place of, we recognize this, is that for all the things that we see take place, it's nothing new under the sun, whether if it's racial division, whether if it's, uh, if it's just turmoil, whether if it's just conflict, listen, all of that has been since the beginning of time. Read James chapter 2. You'll see this throughout Scripture. And our response is to be a people who respond out of compassion, out of truth, out of love. But here's the reality. I want you to catch this. There will never be a complete resolve until people get saved. Until people experience the love of God and surrender to that, they cannot manifest it to others. Come on, somebody. But it doesn't mean that we take up arms and we rebel against. No. It means even more so we love. Even more so, even more so, we show compassion. It doesn't mean we tolerate, but it means that in the midst of it, we serve, we love, we share, we even more so preach the gospel louder in this hour. Man, because I want to tell you something. Our, con our, our, our culture, our climate, our country is in need of a sovereign move of God in this hour. And I believe this with all my heart, is that whenever revival touches this nation, listen, you'll see people begin to, instead of the mouth and the filth that is coming out of their mouth, the foul language, they'll begin to express the love of Christ. They'll be expressed, begin to express the compassion of God for mankind. And they'll begin to preach truth instead of opinions. And I want to tell you, church, the thing we need to be praying for is not racial, not, not a healing of racial division. God does that. That needs to happen. But we need to be praying for salvation. Because listen, as long as man is without God, he will be wicked. As long as man, and I don't care what color you are, where you're from, without God, you're wicked. Without God in your life, without Jesus in your life, there is no good in you at all. But friend, I want to tell you something. My Bible says that God's kindness leads me to repentance. Not his rebuke. Listen, 
Not his brow beating, but his kindness leads me to repentance. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It's when we begin to see this, because this all goes back to, listen, what God does in this, in us, from salvation forward, listen, all of that work, the, the gospel work that's taking place, the work of the cross that's taking place in our life is a physical demonstration of the goodness of the fa- good Father, our Heavenly Father, manifesting in, in His people, His righteousness, Jehovah Sikhanu. The Lord, our righteousness. What does righteousness mean? Righteousness comes from two different words, right standing. And often this is our problem. We're so consumed in our culture, in our nature, in trying to be in right standing with man, but we don't realize that righteousness is not speaking here first, it's speaking between us and God first. Because as I said earlier, until we're in right standing with God, until we are made righteous through Christ Jesus, and we're in right standing and right relationship with God, we will never fully be in right standing with man. Come on, somebody. Man, I'm preaching a lot better than y'all are even shouting amen and clapping this morning. But I just want to encourage you. Man, you want, you want to see healing begin to take place? Instead of preaching or hollering bigotry and racial slurs and griping at everything, man, begin to preach the gospel to your neighbors. Every time they begin to complain, you begin to talk about the goodness of God in your life. Man, you begin to plant seeds. Every time someone wants to gripe about whatever's happening out on either coast, listen, why don't you begin to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ? Give this opportunity that he would be glorified in the midst of this. The last one I want to give you today is this. Actually, two more. But this one I want you to catch. It's Jehovah Shema. It means this, the Lord is present. We find this in Ezekiel chapter 48. Is Ezekiel is given a vision of the, the holy city, the, the new Jerusalem. And in, in writing... As the Holy Spirit inspires him, he makes a statement at the end of, of this passage. He says this, he calls the city, he says, in this city, the holy city, the city of Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, he says, it'll be called the present of God, or the Lord is present. The Lord is there. Man, what a testimony that we look at the same thing that God is the Lord Shema in our life, that he is present with us, that he dwells in our life. But, oh, church, I'm thankful, and even more so, why we need to preach the gospel, because there is a day, a blessed day of his imminent return, where the skies are going to split open, the archangel is going to blow the trumpet, there's going to be a sound, and listen, man, all of a sudden, all those who are dead and in Christ shall rise first, and those who are in Christ Jesus will be called home, and will be rejoicing in heaven. And church, listen, I don't want anybody to miss that train. I don't care if they're sitting in the front or if they're sitting in the back as long as they're on the ride. Are you with me today? And even more so, we're called to be the voice in the wilderness. We're called to be the voice of the nation to proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, that God is good, Satan is bad. Get in love with Jesus, get on the train, and let's all rejoice for eternity in the goodness of our God. Amen? I want to show you a quick video this morning, and then I'm going to finish with one last word that I want to share with you in, in closing today. But if you will at this time, if you'll turn your attention to the screen.
Maybe you can't even imagine being the Spider Girl. But on this Father's Day, no matter your situation, we got some really great news. There's a heavenly Father, and he's a really, really good daddy. And when you choose him, God adopts you into his family. And he becomes not a pretend dad, or a partial dad, or anything less than your real dad. He becomes his really child. We may be young, but two things we know from experience. First, the love of the good father is something to treasure forever. Second, God is a good father. And being his child makes Father's Day extra special. Happy Father's Day! What an incredible testimony of what the demonstration of a really dad, and but yet a good father. Because like I said in the beginning, even though no matter what all of our backgrounds are, we all have a heavenly father, and he's a good father. As I've gone through and showed you the names of God that we see throughout Scripture where God engaged with mankind and showing how good of a father he is as a provider, as a healer, as one who's present, as one who's righteous, as a victory, as one who brings a victory, as one who is our peace, as one who's our shepherd and leads. Scripture talks about one other trait of God. In fact, we see this first whenever Paul, I'm sorry, Jesus uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, whenever he's calling out to the Father, and he's telling us, God, if, if there's any way, Father, if there's any way, let this cup pass from me. And this is before he would go to the cross for each and every one of us to demonstrate just how much God loves us. We read this in Mark chapter 14, verse 36, and he said, speaking of Jesus, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Jesus may mention of God, one of, of who God is in a very intimate way. Not just God or Father God far off, but Abba, Father, and that's, that's the best way to describe that is as daddy God, a closest, one who's near and intimate, one who we may, in our earthly fathers may call pops or dad or daddy or poppy, whatever it may be. I'll never forget my dad, for his grandkids, he took on the name of Paul Paul Buddy. And those kids, when they call him that, that was an intimate expression. That was something that spoke of the funny nature of my dad, he took that from what Bill Cosby showed with the boy that he'd go, hey, or the, his daughter who said, hey, bud, to her best friend. And so my dad always said, I'm going to be Paul, Paul, buddy. Close in expression. And God, in his word, saw fit to once again show us not only he's a God who's all powerful and who provides and who leads and all these things that are replicated and shown and earthly fathers. But he demonstrates and shows us an intimate inside picture of who he is as a loving father. One who's close and present. One who is Abba Father. Daddy God. Still in a reverence and honor of who he is. But yet one that we can come and that we can find peace to cast all of our cares on. One that we can come and in the moments of the night when we're frustrated or when we're hurt, that he would embrace us and just love us and say it's going to be all right. As we read on in Scripture, we tell, see this in Romans chapter 8, verse 12. He said, for you did not receive. And this one would say, all of us through Jesus can have that relationship with God. Through the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Because of what Jesus did, it paved way that we can all experience God as Abba Father, the same way that Jesus responded to him. Romans chapter 8, verse 12, we read, in fact, I want to turn there because it gives a little bit more detail. And as Paul is writing, he makes a statement, verse 12, he says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if that by the Spirit... You put, on, put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, 
Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. What a promise. Man, that as we put our faith in Jesus, that we become heirs, sons and daughters of the Most High God. Therefore, we can come before him and call out to him as Abba Father. Abba Father simply means this. It's an Arabic word, Abba is. And this word simply means it's a closely transferred or translated, as I said earlier, as daddy. It's a common use term for young children who would address their fathers. It signifies close, intimate relationships of the father to his child, as well as childlike trust that a young child puts in his daddy. A place of closeness. And friend, you and I, as we call on Jesus and as we receive him as our Lord, it makes us to where we can be in right standing with God the Father and have an Abba Father child relationship, a close relationship. Galatians, if you'll turn there, and I want to close with this as the worship team comes back up. Galatians chapter 3, Paul kind of dives into this a little bit deeper. And in it, he says this in re- reference to being sons and heirs. He said, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. That means every one of us who have put our faith in Jesus, we are sons and heirs. For as many of you were baptized into Christ and put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you, if you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I, I want to back up and I want to say something here because listen to me. Pastor, how can you say that if people will just get saved and surrender to the Lord, that all of a sudden they'll begin to heal racial division. They'll begin to heal our culture because of that passage right there. Do you hear what he said? Because of what Jesus Christ has done and when we are in Christ Jesus, he says they're no longer Jews, no longer Gentiles. Come on, somebody. There's no longer slave. There's no longer free. We're all simply children of the most high God. Man, there's a healing that begins to place. Just like Jesus said, my prayer, Father, is that they would be one like you and I are one. And listen, that doesn't come from the heart of the Son, but reality, that comes from the heart of the Father. Because He's a good Father. He's a loving Father. He's a merciful Father. A Father who provides. A Father who brings peace. A Father who brings healing. A Father who leads. He's a good Father. Listen. One who brings victory in the midst of battles. He's a father who heals, but he's also a father who's present. And listen, he's a father who cares. Scripture tells us this, that he cares so much that while we were yet sinners, when we were furthest from him, he demonstrated his love for us by sending his son, one and only son, Jesus, to take our place, to pay the debt that we owe, The price that was due to us, he paid it all for us because he loved us. Beautiful thing is this, is that if we just simply surrender and come to him through his son Jesus, we come forgiven, we come bought with a price, but listen, we come received. He's standing with his arms wide open to say, will you come? Jesus, if you stand before you in physical form today, he'd tell you, come, follow me. You know why? Because he's going to the Father. He'd say, join me, come. And all it demands is surrender. You've already been forgiven. The cross and the payment has already been paid. But it's when we receive Jesus. He say, Jesus, I turn from my past and my rightness to receive your righteousness. That I can be in right standing with the Father and receive the love of Almighty God. Therefore, as earthly fathers, man, we can model before. Man, we can aspire and live to be a good father because we have a good father to model after. And for those who need a father, those who are fatherless today, listen, you're not fatherless, friend. You may not have an earthly father, but you've got a heavenly father who loves you. 
And today, my encouragement to be this, is for you to receive and rejoice for having a good Heavenly Father, one who loves you, and today, to run to Him and tell Him how much you love Him. But today, if you're far and distant, as I said earlier, the way we come to Him is through His Son, Jesus. And it's just a simple place where we come to Him and we simply say, maybe today, all across this room, every head, every eye, every head bowed, every eye closed, Maybe today you're making a decision, and today as you recognize the goodness of God, Him as a good Father, and you're saying, I want a right relationship with Him. We know that only happens through His Son, Jesus. And so today, maybe you might want to say a prayer like this, and desiring to have a right relationship with God. To say, Father, thank you for your love. Even whenever I didn't love you, even when I was furthest from you, God, you showed your love for me. Thank you for seeing your son Jesus to pay for my sin. And ultimately to die and to raise again, provide a way that if I'll repent of my sins and if I'll confess Jesus as Lord, not only will I be forgiven, but I'll be made right before you, God. And I'll be able to fully experience not only your lordship in my life, but you as my heavenly father in my life. So today, Jesus, come live in me. Come live in me. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And today, I choose to follow you all the days of my life. Thank you that because of you, Jesus, I can have a right relationship with my heavenly father. And today, Lord, I want to praise you and I want to thank you for loving me, for saving me, for setting me free and calling me to be your son, your daughter. Today, Father, may you be glorified in and through me. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Friend, if you said that prayer today, listen, if it was like that, that place of surrender, listen. God knows your heart and that place of confession, that place of calling out to Him. Listen, I want to tell you, today you made the first step as walking as a son, as a daughter of the Most High God. And I want to encourage you, we want to help you not only connect to the kingdom of God, to God, to your Father, but also we want to connect you to the body of Christ and to other believers to help you walk through this life and this journey. So I want you to do something for me real quick. If you got your, either your Bible app or online, if you go to our, our, our uh, HG Sermon, our website, there's a place at the top that says connect the tab. You click on there. Today, if you made the decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you in the Bible app, click on there where it says, I've decided to follow Jesus. Fill that out. Shoot it to us. Let us know. Or online, if you'll fill that out and send it to us so we can be in contact with you and help you to begin the next steps as a, as a, as a believer in Jesus Christ today. And today, if you're a guest with us, if you fill out the information, Shoot that, just let us know so we can be in contact with you and just encourage you, help you get connected to the church. We want to see you continue to grow and thrive in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Is the Lord good? Would you all do me a favor for me? Go ahead and stand this morning. We're going to sing one last song as we close. And I just want to encourage you. Man, today, I want you to reflect on the goodness of our Heavenly Father. All that He's done for us. Listen. Man, He sent His Son, Jesus, to not only live but now so die and be resurrected that we can have everlasting life. Today, we celebrate the goodness of our Father, the good Father that we have because of what His Son did and the faithfulness of His Son. Today, can we just lift our hands and say thank you to the Lord this morning. Father, we just bless you. We thank you, Father, for saving. We thank you for delivering, for healing, restoring. And today, we choose to follow you, King Jesus that you be glorified in and through our life. Lord, receive our highest praise this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, give the Lord a clap off and a praise.
on, church. Are you glad to be a part of the house of God? The family of God. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for coming, for weathering the storm, to make it here this morning. Aren't you so thankful to be able to look out there and say, we're not out there, we're in here this morning. It's good. Church, we love you. Thank you so much for coming and worshiping with us. As we dismiss, we're going to ask that we're going to go from section one to...